Welcome to module 14 of a course called Coding for Crosswords. For more information about the full course, please see the links below. We got wildfires, we got COVID. This is just a challenge to get through 2020 right now. So let's just program. What we did last time was to develop these two structures called a point and a span. Uh, let's just take a quick look at those here. And at the bottom of the file, we have the usage of them. Here's the point. It's a particular point in our grid. And then um, the span starts with a point and then runs a certain amount of boxes, a number of, you know, a length. So like three would be like a three letter word, five would be like a five letter word. And then it's either vertical, true, or horizontal, false. So those are two of the little data objects that we want to use to uh, help us solve a bigger problem. And what is that bigger problem? Let's go back to the grid. This is the puzzle, the, 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 the crossword puzzle that we're reading in. It's the seed, right? So you're starting with dog and cat as the seed entries. And the goal of our computer program is going to be to come up with one or more possible uh, full crossword um, designs that include only legal words in all of these crossing entries from our library of 12,000 words. So in a much earlier lecture, we read the library in, we read this grid into a file, we dealt with some memory issues. We have our library all prepared to do the pattern hash. Um, the, the goal for us in this module is to take the, the point and the span data structure and uh, write the routine called uh, fill spans. I think we can call it or find spans. We're going to take a grid like this and we're going to try to find out where are all the spans. One of them is here. One of them is here. One of them is here. One of them is here and so forth. So there should be seven spans horizontally. Some of them have letters in them already. Some of them are totally blank. Then we want to also find the, 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 the seven vertical spans, right? So these are all the vertical spans. And if you look at them, there are different lengths. They have different combination of letters that are already entered and blanks. Um, but we do never include any of this, the, these, these blocks up in the corners. We never include any of those squares. So that's the challenge of this module is how to compute all the spans. We want to have a vector uh, that will contain all of the spans that we care about. So let's do a few things. Let's first go back to the span. Here's the span. We want to define, just like we did for other vector uses, like here, like this is a vector of words. Let's go to the span. We want to define span. We want to define something called spans, which is a type that means it's a vector. And now here's a good decision. Do we have to want, do we want it to be a vector of spans or of span pointers? Now we had to do the span, ah, sorry, for the word case, we had to do the pointers because we really wanted these word objects to be more persistent. They're, they're kind of a heavier object. We want, we want one word for the entire program. Spans are what they call plain old data. It's just gonna be a data object. So we generally do not want to, to worry about pointers for spans. It's okay to have multiple spans. It's okay to copy spans, they're very small. It's okay to let a vector resize the spans as it need to, uh, you know, I mean, resize the vector, which means, which means deleting and copying and moving spans around on us. We just don't care because we're always gonna be working with spans as a copy of the span. So that's a distinction between objects that are more like top level design objects where you want one copy of each object only versus POD, plain old data objects, like a span where we don't really care if there's more than one of them and then they're easy to copy. So the span is for sure just one of these, one of these uh, plain old data objects because all it has is a point and a couple of, a couple of it, it and a bool. We don't care if those are repeated. There's no resource associated with a span. It's just an accounting data structure. So there we go. So there's our spans. What we'd like to have then in the grid, remember this grid structure, here's the top of it and I'll jump to the bottom of it. We wanna add a new thing, which is gonna be a list of spans. And let's just call it, we can call it just spans. That's probably fine. So here's the top of the grid structure. We've already had a few routines like the size of it, uh, how to load it from a file, how to check it for validity, how to print it. Those are all fine. We're gonna add this. It's gonna be a vector of spans. And that's the thing that we want to fill. So today's goal in this module is to fill that spans vector. And what we're going to do is a little tricky. In fact, the, the code we're going to produce, it's going to probably be 20 or 30 lines of code, will be very much like the kind of code you would do if you were doing an interview with you know, Facebook or Google or 
or Microsoft. It's that type of problem. It's like a little nugget problem where you have to walk a grid, uh, count different boxes, uh, skip black squares, um, and then add all those things to this spans vector. So let's 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 kind of draw the skeleton in of what we want. Whoops, like, let's do it, actually let's do it more at the top. Let's go back up to the top of the thing. So let's not do it ahead of the little queries. Those are okay to leave there, but let's do it here. Void, let's call it fill spans. And <clears throat> this time, is it gonna be const or not? No, right, because it has to actually work. We want, it, we want fill spans to fill up that spans list. So this is not gonna be const. And so this is gonna be the work that we wanna do today. But before we get there, let's build some, let's kind of build slowly up to that. We don't know what this is going to be yet. This is going to be the thing that's going to walk over the whole grid and, and, and try to find each of those blanks that we identified already um, and then add them to the spans list. But to do that, we need some helper routines. And one of the helper routines is going to have to do, it's kind of, you can kind of hint it down here. Let's get rid of all this stuff. We don't need this anymore. This all works just fine. Let's put the print of the grid back. Um, let's try this. Let's do a point. And let's try some different points. Like, let's try to guess if the point 3.4, what we really want to do is print for debugging. Let's say grid, um, it, uh, let's call it in bounds, P1. Okay, what I'm trying to show here is a routine. We want to write this routine called in bounds. That's, that's what I'm trying to get at. I want to write a routine called in bounds that will tell us whether or not any point that you give it is inside the grid or not. This is gonna be useful because what we're gonna do next is we're gonna be incrementing a point to try to scan through the grid. And when we get to the very bottom of it, we wanna make sure that we can check that we've incremented the point all the way off of the edge. Plus it's a good safety routine to have anyway. So this is gonna be the first thing we'll do today is to write this inbounds routine. Okay, so let's go back to the grid and let's practice writing that. So let's put it, these are nice, these are easy const queries. Those are kind of, kind of nice to leave at the very top. They're very simple. Then let's do this one next maybe. Bool in bounds. And this one is going to be const, right? We don't want this to change the grid object. If we're asking it if a point is in the grid or not, we don't want it to change the grid uh, when we ask it. It's just going to tell us this point is in the grid or it's not in the grid. That's it. So this is the first challenge for this module is write this routine. Can you figure out what you need in here? Oh, whoops, I missed this part. Point. We can do this as, uh, here, just to be proper, we can do this as a const reference. Okay, that's pretty much the same as passing the point in by value. It's just a little bit more of a standard style to use const references to pass things in. Even though in this case, the point's actually quite small. Point is actually the same size as, as the address to the point. <laughs> um, but fill in the guts of this. So this is the, that's the challenge right now, is, is to fill these guts in. And you're gonna use uh, some of these routines up here, right? Because that's, that's gonna tell you whether or not it fits. So go ahead and give that a try. And if you're back from that, we'll work on that together now. Um, it's pretty simple. We just really want to say return what? P row, we want it to be greater than zero. You know, it has to be a negative row would, would be out of bounds. And P row is what? Less than rows, our own size of the grid. And what? We still have to do the columns. P call is greater than zero. And P call is less than calls. Okay, so that's what we're returning. We're returning that whole thing. We're just saying, look, this point is in the grid if it's bigger than or equal to zero on both dimensions. So it's not, you know, negative, some crazy negative point. And it's less than the bottom edge of the grid, right? And there, remember the off by one stuff. So the the rows actually returns seven in our case, columns return seven, and we're allowing points between zero and six. So this is this computer engineer, you know, counting by zero thing. But the general pattern always is gonna be greater than or equal to the lower limit and less than the upper limit, just like in the for loops that we're doing. So let's, let's try this, let's test this um, here, like we've done here, we've done one point here. Let's add a few more points just so we can kind of get a little more Variety. Let's try a negative one just to make sure that it catches that case. And let's also try one that's too big, right? Let's go up to seven comma three, right? That should be too big because the most you can ever have for any one of these two numbers is zero up to six. So this should be, this should be, this one should be inbound. This should be true or one. This should be out of bounds or zero and this should be out of bounds zero. So let's see if that's what we get when we compile this. And like always before, we're doing this type of compile line. 
and it compiles and it runs and it, oh, we didn't print. Okay, sorry, I only printed the first one. So let's print the other two. Oh, I need to, sorry, we need to compile it again and then run it. There we go. Okay, one meaning that this point is inbounds and then that point's out of bounds and that point's out of bounds. So the inbounds routine uh, at this point looks like it uh, looks like it works. So we can kind of get rid of this little, these are like sort of quickie tests. You know, if you were writing this code in a professional environment, you'd be taking those tests and making separate test files that you'd run all the time forever. You know, whenever you touch this code ever again, um, you know, those tests would run again to make sure that the first one was one and the second two were zero. And those are all great to, to build as you build a big library of, of code that other people are going to be touching because then you guarantee that somebody else comes along and touches your code, uh, they don't mess it up. Right. But for us right now, that's enough to know that we've written something that works and we can just kind of steamroll ahead. So what's the next little routine that we can do that's interesting for us? Well, there's this idea of incrementing a point across a grid. And we're going to use that when we scan the grid. And the, the thing I want, what that's going to look like is this. Let's start with a point that's going to start, let's start it just at zero. Remember a point, the constructor for a point with no argument starts at zero, zero. Let's start there. And let's do this thing. Let's see if we can do a loop that does this. While, actually, let's do, this way. Let's, let's do it as a do loop. Do, and then in here, we're going to put the guts of what we're going to do. While, and then we're going to say grid next point. What am I doing here? Let me just print the point in the middle here. Okay. Haha. -ha. So what are we doing? I want next, we have to write a function called next that's going to increment the point. Oh, and we should also add, which way should it increment? Crossword grids always have this duality between horizontal and vertical, right? So you can increment across or you can increment down. And when you get to the end of a, a row, if you're incrementing across, you wanna to jump to the next row. If you're incrementing down, you wanna jump to the next column. So what we'll do is we'll also add a true and false here for horizontal or vertical. So let's go back to the grid and let's write this next function. We want it to take this point and change it. Now, how do you change an argument? You don't just pass it by value. You pass it by either reference or pointer. And reference is just more, it's just easier really. So let's go back to the grid and we're gonna remember this function. We want to, to write this thing. While well, grid, oh, something about my syntax is wrong here. It's the false has to be here. Okay, the parentheses look better now. So the, are these, these two are the arguments to the next. So let's grab that and let's go back up to the grid definition and let's add that. Let's put it in maybe here. It's a little bit more heavyweight than a query so it can go into here and it's going to return, ha, let's make a return value here. Returns true if point is still in bounds. How about that? That would be very useful for what we're gonna do next. Okay, so here's what we're doing. We don't need this grid anymore here because we're, we're within the, the whole grid class. So you don't need to scope it to the grid. And then this is going to be a point reference. Now, is it a const point reference? No, because this routine is going to actually increment point. So we're going to leave it as a reference and it's going to be, it'll, it'll either count vertically or horizontally. Okay, so that is the function that we want to write. So that's the next thing up that we want to write. We did the we did the inbounds already as the first challenge. This next challenge now is going to be to write the guts of this thing. And the and the goal of it is going to, let's put a little more description here in. Next, increments the point across the grid one box at a time, we can say, okay? So go ahead and give that a shot. See if you can write that routine in there. Um, It's got a little guts to it. It'll be a little bit, uh, it'll be a little tricky, but I think we can do it. So um, I'll give you a hint. You want to do something like this. You're going to have to have two cases. If vert, you know, if we're doing, if we're doing it vertical, it really is a different operation. You can try to combine that code if you want, but for now we can kind of just treat it like two separate cases, and then we'll see if there's any code we can share between the two, but sometimes it's easier just to blow these apart into two separate cases. Um, let's do the horizontal case first, because that's I find that easier to think about, then we'll go do the vertical case next. If it, So we're, we're, ask, we're asking to increment this point horizontally, right? So let's just go ahead and do this. Let's say point 
Row, no, we want, we're incrementing horizontally, so we're incrementing the column. Point, column, plus, plus, right? We're just adding one to the column, that's it. But what if it runs off the edge? So we need to check, what if p call is now greater than or equal to the size of our grid? What do we do? That's like the line feed, right? We're like writing the routine that's gonna be walking this point across our grid. And only the grid itself knows how big it is. That's why this whole routine can't be standing alone in the file. It has to be part of the grid because only the grid knows how big it is. If you run off the edge, what you wanna do is reset the columns to zero and add to the row, right? That's it. And we're going to return if the inbounds, if that point is still in bounds, right? But we need to also do the other case. So this is, if you want another challenge, if you haven't done this yet, this is the second challenge. Go ahead and get in here and write the code that's in here for the vertical case, right? That should be pretty easy. You're just gonna be taking this code, modifying it. So give that a try if you haven't done it yet. Okay, welcome back. Let's just do that. That should be pretty easy. We essentially just switch the rows and columns, right? We just take the rows and make them columns and the columns and make them rows. That, that really is what it is. So we take the P column, it's a row now. That's a row, that's gonna be rows. That's gonna be row, that's gonna be column. And let's just walk through that to make sure. We're going vertically now, right? So you wanna take a point, and since the rows is the, the kind of vertical indexing, you wanna say row plus plus. They'll leave the column the same until you get to the bottom of the row. When the row finally gets to be greater than or equal, meaning you've gone from one to two all the way up to six, now you're up to, now you, you've just tried to increment it to seven, and it says now it's greater than or equal to the seven, which is the number of rows in the grid. Then it's gonna reset the row to zero, and then it's gonna increment one to the column. Now that last time it increments, the column's actually gonna become seven, which is gonna knock the point actually off the grid, but that's why at the bottom we check this, so it'll return inbound. So that very last time, it will return false, right? So next we'll keep returning true as long as it's incrementing the point until it hits the very bottom, then it's gonna say, I'm done, you're out of that point. So if you think about it, what we're doing is we're writing something for the grid to look at a, a point on the grid, almost like we're reading a file, right? It has the same kind of feeling, like this inbounds almost feels like that, that F end of file. Remember that routine that we called to see if we were done reading bytes from a file? So in a way, it's a very similar idea. You're just reading like characters one at a time from this grid instead of a file. Um, so let's, I think we're ready to try this now. Let's go back to the bottom of the file where we wrote this thing. Now this kind of a do loop, it just starts to run this thing. It prints the point and it's gonna start at zero, zero. And then it's going to say while, okay, go ahead and add one to the point and we're going, this false means we're going horizontally. So let's, let's compile this, see if we got the code right for one thing. And the code looks good. And let's now run it. What do we expect to happen here, right? What do you expect? There we go, it's a bunch of points. So let's see what points it actually did. It started, well, okay, so first of all, it read the library still, we're reading the library, that's fine. Then it read the grid, and it's telling us it read seven rows and seven columns. Um, and, then, and then it prints the grid out. So this came from the file called test. That's from this, if you go back to the source file, that's from this line right here. Um, okay, then it, then it prints the grid out, which is nicest to see the either letters or blocks or blanks. Um, and then it starts to go, and it starts to print and it starts from zero. You can see it starts zero, zero. Now what happens here? It goes zero, six, and then it goes one, zero. So this is just, just what we want to see. We want to see it going row zero and then across. Let's just try the other way. So let's go back up and let's try this to be true. So we want to make sure that it also works going vertically because we're going to need that one too to find all the vertical spans. We want both the horizontal spans and the vertical spans. So everything we're doing in this module is going to have this duality between the the rows and the columns. So let's compile this and let's run that and we get this. Now let's see if that looks right. Now it's gonna be very similar, but notice that look, the increment now is happening in the row, the first number. It's going, it's going zero, zero, then it's going down, 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 all the way till six, zero, then it kicks up to zero, one, um, which is the next column, um, the next column over. Okay, so that, um, so that part is done. Now, there's one more routine we need, which is to identify what is under that point. What I mean is you wanna be able to ask a grid, back up to this grid, you wanna be able to say, hey, let's have a bool response. Are you a block? 
and let's give it a const point again. And it's going to be a const routine. We don't. We also don't want this routine to modify the block. So let's let's just review what those const means. This const means the point that you give it to check to see if it's a block or not is not going to be written. And this const means that the grid object itself won't be modified by this routine. So all of the data that's part of the grid that's at the bottom of the grid here uh, will not be modified by, the, by this routine. So this is a, it, it takes both a const argument and it's a const function itself. And what we want this function to do, and this is another challenge, is return, returns true if the point P is a uh, dot, we call that a block in the grid. Okay, and people, different people like to do different things with comments. You either, you can kind of make comments full sentences with a capital letter and a period at the end, or you can keep them just uh, little little tags. Um, I'm not too consistent about that. Some people are much more consistent about how they treat that, but uh, uh, do whatever you like. Just, but comments are good, especially when, you know, the name like block might not be that obvious what it does. Well, wow, block could be a verb. It could be like, you know, you know, we could also name this thing like is block. That wouldn't be, Terrible either. I'm just going to leave a block for, for simplicity, but then I do have this comment explaining that a little bit. So that's your challenge. Try to figure out what do you write in here to make that function work the way that we've claimed that it should work. You know, it should return true if the points a dot. And the point has a row and a column, remember. And where's, as a hint, where is that data stored? Remember, it's stored down here in the grid. It's in this big vector of things called lines. So we've, remember we've got this is if you have to review this go back go way back to I think it's module six um, where we created all this stuff you 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 have a vector of strings so you have a you have a vec, you have a string for each row of letters and then you have a vector of strings one, uh, you know so so that this, there's one string for each row so let's see if you can let's see if you can fill in that um, so go do that if you haven't tried already. And if you're back, let's let's figure out how to do this. It's it's not it's not super obvious. We want to get to a character, right? One of the characters is one of the positions in the lines. You know, one thing we can also do is, is which is good is we can assert that this is in bounds, right? Hey, if 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 we're if someone's calling us to say, hey, is this is this position in the grid, you know, a block, meaning one of those black squares or not? Um, you know, they better be asking us with a valid point in the grid. So it's up to the caller to this function to guarantee that they're making a, a call with a legal grid. You could also have a convention that says if it's out of if it's out of range, you could return false. You know, that would also be true also. But since we're required it to be true, we could also put that requirement here because it's not obvious from the name of the function whether you allow out of bounds points to be called or not. So we could say point P must be in bounds, right? We might change that later. Sometimes during some of the routines, when you start doing these traversal routines, it's actually convenient when you start peeking a point ahead or peeking a point behind. It's sometimes convenient to actually have that just return false rather than fatal and crash the whole program because you some of your algorithms will work nicely if you assume that like one box outside the boundary of the grid are all black squares. But for now, let's leave this as just an assert fail. And what we're going to do is we're going to say lines. And which line is it? Well, it's going to be the line that represents that row and, and then we want to take a character out of that string, and that's going to be the character that is that column. So that really should be it, right? Take a look at that and see if that looks right. You know, it's asking, are you a block at this point? Let's dig out the lines that represents that row, uh, which is this data down here. And then within that lines of that row, it's going to be the character that represents that column. Um, oh, well, then we have to actually do the work. Cox, I forgot the work. So then we're going to return um, what? C equal. This is not an assignment. It's an equality checker, right? This, this actually assigns this thing to C with that operator. But then this is going to be an equality checker to C equal. And what? Dot is the thing we're checking for, right? So let's, let's add some code at the bottom to test that. For now, let's comment this out. We don't really want that fired right now. Let's let's print um, grid um, C out grid uh, block, and let's pick a few points. Um, you know, to do that, let's go back to our window here and let's look at this grid. 
I mean, this is the manif this is the same, just in text form, the same as the grid that we've been showing on paper. Um, let's pick a few points. Let's how about the first point is just zero zero. Let's do that one. So let's do, you know, that point's going to be zero. And then let's uh, put a line feed. And then let's also do, how about let's do another point. Let's call that P1, P2. This point, let's make it like what? Let's do some one of these blanks. So row 0, 1, 2, 3, and then 0, 1, 2, 3. We picked the very middle square in the entire puzzle. That would be 3, 3. Okay. And then let's pick... Let's pick one that actually is a block. So let's pick maybe row 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and let's pick maybe 0, 1, 2. So 5, comma 2 should be. So, so what, what do we expect? We expect this point to be 0. It's not a block. This point should be 0, not a block. But this point should be 1. Yes, this is a block. It's this block right here. And so let's go ahead and run that. And it compiles, so we're doing okay. And then we see the 001, just like we were guessing it would be. So the next task, and this will be a challenge for you, is to write two more routines. We want two more routines to be letter and um letter and what's the other one blank um and now that i see this you know i think letter blank you know what? i think it probably would be better to say is is block and again i'm using lowercase naming here because these are really quick routines they're almost like accessors they're just almost trivial routines they don't do any action they're const they're just very tiny one-liners usually so i kind of get away with using the all the lowercase naming instead of something like this which is doing kind of a more sophisticated operation sort of a major function of the class that's my design style again you can use what design style you like but let's let's um let's do the is block um right so we'll go by the top and let's rename that is block so i think that that probably cleans up the naming a little bit maybe better um and then you know you could put comments in these two as well but they but they work kind of the same is the pre, is the is the previous one so the um the blank one's easier right it's going to be the same code except checking now for a blank which is what which is a dash we're using a dash for a blank so instead of a dot it's going to do a blank so work on that and see if you get that to work and then test it with a with a couple blanks um and if you're back we can we could do something here that'll kind of help clean this up a little bit. Rather than just copying this code, you know, three times, you know, like this, you know, I'm kind of making a lot of code in here. A kind of cool thing to do is to just, you see that there's a common piece of code here and that's this, this is kind of a tricky piece of code, right? It'd be nice to have that only in one place. So let's do that. So let's return a character that says, um, let's just call it something like um, box at this point. What this will do is returns character value of the box at point P, and P must be in bounds. I'll put it up here. And, um, right. So, you know, you can depend on how heavy you want to comment all this stuff. Um, it's okay to leave these in. Sometimes if you comment too much, it can actually make the code even a little more complicated. But um, we'll see that for, like that for now. So here we go. So here's, here is how that looks. Um, we're going to assert the points and bounds still, and then we're going to just go return this thing, right? So you see what I did? I just pulled that piece of functionality. This just, this one line kind of, I pulled out to this common routine because we're going to use it two more times. It's nice to have this code only in one place rather than written, written multiple times. And then we're going to go down here and we're going to say, we're going to get rid of this whole scene. We're just going to say box. We're going to return box of point, right? So it kind of cleans up the code, right? You can see how that's, that's pretty good. And we even could, if you want, you can even take this assert out because it's already being checked up here. So we kind of know that that's already pretty safe to call. So then if you want to do this one, it's literally just, it's literally just, just you just replace the check against the point, against the dot with a check against, oh no, it's not a space. Remember, it's not a space, it's a, uh, it's a dash. So we use a dash for a blank, um, the way we've done this puzzle to be consistent with some other crossword tools on the web. Um, now that's, that's those two. What about this third one? Uh, what's that gonna be? Well. That's a little trickier. You could say, let first, first let's get the character. 
Okay, so that, that grabs the character. Now we're going to return whether or not the C is um, greater than or equal to A and C is less than or equal to capital Z. So I'm using the, the trick that they're ASCII encoded and A through Z runs serially in ASCII. I mean, I could have a thing that says return true if C is A or C is B or C is D. You know, I mean, I could run all the way through the alphabet, but I know that this is okay because the ASCII encodings will have a consistent range for A through Z. So I can kind of get away with with this for uh, for here. If you were doing something in Unicode or you wanted to handle characters more properly, there'd be a lot richer treatment of the characters. But for this type of environment where you're reading in a file and we know we've converted everything to upper case already, we can just do something like this and that's fine. So let's go to the bottom and let's 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 test these three. And let's do let's add to this a little bit more. So let's say um you know, it's going to be get a little hard to read this. So, so let's go ahead and put in block equals like that, right? So let's do block. Let's do uh, blank equals. And then we're going to do is blank. That's going to be two. Oh, no, so that's one there. And then we're going to do you one. That's going to be two. And then we're going to do it again for the third one. You can kind of see where I'm going with this. I'm trying to just be comprehensive letter equals this is going to be is letter okay so let's change that to p3 and that to p2 so i'm just trying to basically come up with calling the three different functions on each of the three points or sample points so let's run that and see what we do and that compiles and it runs and it gives us this okay so the first point is the d right and it's saying it's not a block, it's not a blank, but it is a letter, which is correct. The next point was the very middle of the puzzle, remember? And for the middle of the puzzle, it's saying it's not a block, but it is a blank, it's not a letter, that's good. The third point was this point down here, right? Five, two, um, which yeah, is a block, not a blank, and not a letter. So that's just showing the three cases. So that's a good enough test for, for our case right now that we know that our code works. So for our purposes, we can just kind of nuke this here and what we can do is um, comment this back in again now. And we could do something like this. We could say print P. Um, and then we could say um, is block P. Um, right. So what this is going to do is going to print the is block just the is blocked by itself. Just to give you an idea of what we're gonna do in the next routine we're gonna scan. Um, let me just show you what this prints just so you see what I'm up to. Oh, I messed up the, uh, okay, so P, oh, I forgot to put this. These prints are always like this where you kind of miss the, uh, miss the quotes in the, in the, in the less than uh, shift signs. So um, I still didn't do it right. Oh, oh yeah, okay, so I took out this point. All right, I did have the point to start with. I had taken that out. I forgot I borrowed it for the other code. Okay. And then, oh, right. And then the last thing, you've seen a lot of my errors here, is the grid. It, it's not just is block on its own. It's, it's, it's the grid's block. So maybe those are useful just to see how, uh, how, you know, when you program, you just run into these kind of errors all the time and how to fix them. So let's do that. That should really go this time. And then now we run it, and now we're going to get the walking through the grid, just like before, remember, you start at zero, zero, and it's saying, now it's saying zero, 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 one, one, one for the first row. And if we go back and look at our, if we go back here and look, you'll see that that's what it is. It's, it's, oh, interesting. Oh, because we did true. Okay, good. So we're actually walking down. So if you look here, I didn't, I kind of had forgotten we're going true. We're doing uh, we're doing um, vertical walking. So the vertical walk is going to be blank, 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 and then there's there's then there's these three, then there's these three. Okay, now we're ready to dive in and really do the guts, the meat of this operation, and um, this will be a little in the gritty details. So let's uh, get ready to kind of put your thinking cap on. I'll walk through it slowly. What we want is this thing called grid fill spans, right? That's the routine that we want to call here, right? And we've been waiting to fill in the guts of that. That's what we're going to do now. 
Um, here it is. What we're going to do is take some of this stuff, actually, that we were prototyping here. We're going to actually move it into here. We're going to start with that because that's kind of closer to what we want to do. Um, and I'll explain. Um, let's think about that algorithm. How do we want to find all the spans? Like, let's say we're going horizontally. Um, ah, and that's a first, uh, a first change to make then. If we're going horizontally, then we want to add here, we want to add bool vert so that we can have, you know, by false it's a horizontal and the true it's vertical. So first let's do that. So fill spans, we're gonna actually fill spans. Um, well, let's do it the other way, let's do it this way. Let's, let's make a fill spans routine that does all the work because it's nice not to have to the user exposed to this detail, but let's make fill spans, you know, the actual fill spans guts has to go first false and then first and then and then true and that's the you know the horizontal way and then the vertical way typing today is like the wildfires terrible um so right so we're just going to do this and what we can also do here is we can also assert that the spans is empty we don't want to call this thing unless the spans variable that we added here is empty we don't want to call this more than once right it's uh, we want to call fill spans once per grid once we build it and then and then not call it again because it would it would it would duplicate all the spans again and again because the point of this this is going to add to the spans vector with all viable spans in the grid okay so that's that so it's going to call it both horizontal and vertical so it's going to go horizontal first um, what we want to do is start with the so let's go back to the picture here we're going to start here what we want to do is, is move this point, we keep advancing this point until we find the first non-block, you know, the first square that doesn't have a block in it. Now, in our case, that's going to be the first square, but in general, there could be blocks at the start. And then what we're going to do is mark that as the start of a span, and then we're going to count that many letters over, that many boxes over, until the span stops. And we're going to, then we're going to save that span. Then we're going to keep going. And we're just going to repeat that. And if we do that correctly, we should end up with one span, like we said, for each of these as we go. We'll find, we'll, we'll, we'll walk through these. These will all be black. We'll do the next routine. We've already coded that where the next routine we'll take from here. And we'll know right away to update us to here. So we're going to start here again. And we're going to find, oh, this is a valid square. So we're okay here again. We can start a new span. And then we're going to count three again and go. We'll come out here again. We'll come to here. And then we'll say this is a span. And this time we'll count four and so forth. So this is the way we'll get all of the you know the seven horizontal and then the seven vertical um vertical spans so that's the goal of them once we finish that we're done with the module so um so let's see if we can do that with the tools that we've already built so here we go well the first thing we want to do is advance that point up to where the um up to where the point is 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 no longer a block. So we're going to do a while loop here because we want the action to happen first. Uh, we want, I mean, we want, we want the check to happen first. So while, let's do a, let's do a basic check to make sure we never, we never go off the edge of the grid. So while in bounds and um, is block P, is that what we want? We want it to advance. What we're going to do in here is we're going to, we're going to, we're going to call next in here. This is just skipping over um, and by the way, we don't need all the, we don't need the grid prefix anymore because we're inside the grid class already. We just need to just call next. So we're going to do this and we're going to also, we're going to call, we're gonna, when we increment the point, we're going to call it the same way that the, that the caller of this function is asking us to do. So if we're going horizontal, we want to increment this horizontal. If we're going vertical, we want to increment this going vertical. So we just take this, this kind of mode switch called vert and we pass it right in to next. Um, so um, essentially we're saying, look, while... While we're, you know, while we're in bounds, but while we're also um, on a block, sitting on a block square, go to the next one. So this is, once we finish this, once we come down to this line, what are we gonna have? We're gonna be sure that that, that that P is pointing either out of bounds or to a square, um, to a square that, that is not block. So we know this is the start of a span right here. Um, so what we can do is we can say, we can, we can save it. We can say start P equals P and just save that 
point away. In fact, for just for debugging now, we're going to say span start and let's print it out. Oops. P. Okay. Now what do we do? We got to walk. Oh wait, we should probably do one more thing because we could be out of bounds if we're if we're not in bounds. Let's do this thing called break. Break is a command that will stop. Um, the, actually, no, there's no break. We're not in the loop anymore. We actually don't do that. We're going to actually uh, probably just return. We're going to revisit this, but probably this is just a return out of this whole function. Once we've gone all the way past, uh, there's no more start of a new span. We can just return. I think that's probably the right thing to do, but let's, we'll, we'll, we'll check this again. So let's put a little note here fixed to go back and review that. So we're going to save the start of the span. And now what do we want to do? We want to find out how big the span is, right? So we want to keep incrementing. So let's 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 do a little count. Let's do a length equals zero. And now we're going to say do length plus plus. And we're going to say next p. Again, we're going to increment it in the direction that the user caller of this function is telling us to increment in. This could be horizontal or vertical. We don't care. We're just writing the code to work either way. And, and it's kind of cool because all that detail is handled by next, right? We don't really care for which way we're walking across the grid. We're just conceptually moving to the next point. Okay, so we're gonna move. The point now is that we've seen the start of a span. Now we wanna move to the end of the span. How do we know what's the end of a span? It's when the point becomes a block, right? Or goes out of bounds um, of the puzzle. Um, so we're gonna do this while and then we're going to say in bounds p and p. Let's look at that a little bit and see. It has to do something with, well, if it goes out of bounds, we definitely want to stop. We, we've, we've added one past, past the end of the, the, the grid. We also don't want to hit, if we hit a block, we know that that span is over with also. So while it is a block, so actually this should be while it's not a block, right? We wanna keep adding to the point to see how big that span is. It's like we're testing that span. We found the start of it. Now we're trying to grow it as far as we can until we either don't go in, you know, we, we're not in bounds anymore or, or we actually hit a block. Um, so at that point, for right now, let's just put a printout saying end of span. And then let's print the length. length. Length equals length, right? Okay, so let's stop with that. And here's the thing though. Okay, here's maybe what I was missing at the start when I was thinking about this return statement. Um, we actually want to put this whole thing. We don't just want to find one span. When we're done finding one span, we want to repeat, right? So this entire routine needs to go into a big loop outside here. We want to keep the point starting at the start. So while we could say while, we could try while one, or we can even do it while in bounds P, just to protect ourselves against something going out. And let's put all of this stuff into the loop, right? Okay, let's take a look at that and see if that works. So now, if we're out of bounds, well, we still want to return. We don't really want to keep looking at all, so we're still going to just uh, leave that. So that's okay. So. Let's take a kind of a peek at this whole routine and see if we're doing the right thing. We're going to call and let's say with false. We're going to just we're going to be scanning horizontally across the grid. What happens? We start with zero. We check to see while the point is in bounds of the grid. We are then going to increment that point here. We're going to walk up to the next point when the first span starts. Then we're going to say, uh, hey, here's the start of the first span. We we found ourselves the start of the first span. Then we're going to say, let's try to grow that span with this code. Let's try to grow that thing by continuing to add to P. So P keeps growing across that span. We catch how long it is. And then when we're done with that, we say, hey, we found that span. Here's the length. Now, we haven't yet added anything to the spans vector like we, we said here. We're going to add to the spans vector. But let's just print this out and let's just see if we're even on the right track here. So first of all, let's see if this compiles. So that'd be a good challenge for you. Just type this in yourself and then see if it compiles. I don't know if this is going to work or not. Let's give it a try. And we got it. Okay, so that all that all worked okay. So now let's run it and let's see what it does. And it's definitely finding some spans. So here we go. What kind of spans is it finding? Well, here's one, zero, zero, length three. And then one zero in the next row, length three. Two zero, length four. Hey, that actually looks pretty good. So if you look at the picture that we got here, 
Um, look at what it's finding. It's finding a length three span, a length three span, a length four span. And let's go back and see if it hit that seven span. Yep, it found the three zero span seven. So this is actually doing just what we wanted, which is good. I wasn't sure if this was going to work straight out of the box or not. Um, there actually is, for full disclosure, this will work for this grid, but there is a bug here. And this is a, this is a challenge. Can you see what the bug is? There's a certain, for our grid, it doesn't expose it, but there is a bug here that I'm glossing over, which I think I'll just ignore for now so we can get the module, uh, the content of the module done. The bug is we don't actually check for, the bug is right here. Um, it's when we're counting how many boxes are in a span, we actually should stop at the end of the line where this next function kind of hides the end of the line for us. It, it'll, it'll go to the end off the edge of the puzzle and it will by itself jump the point back to the next line or, or if, you're going, if you're incrementing vertically, it'll jump to the next column. That, that's nice that function to do when we're just trying to scan the grid, but when we're trying to count how big the span is, that, that actually will hide the idea that on our picture here, you can see if you happen to have a grid where the span, you had a blank right here, it would actually start here and it would count, it would start counting the span. And what would it do? It would actually keep counting into here. Now for our case, it actually hits this block and it, and it happens to end it, but um, that is a bug in this. So that's kind of a super challenge if you want to do it later is, is, is um, enter a grid um, that would have that characteristic, that would have the blank that would span multiple rows and you'll see that it'll generate one big span that's essentially an illegal span because it'll have part of one row and part of the other and that's not the kind of span we want. So anyway, that's just a side note. For this grid, this, this code actually works and um, it'll be enough for us to go ahead and, and do the spans. So the last thing is we're very close now. We want to do something in here instead of this print statements. I mean, this is fine to print stuff out. What we really want to do here is what? Is add to the spans. So that's the challenge. See if you can do that. See if you can write the code right here that will add to the spans vector and put that span in there. And if you're back, I will do that. Spans push back, and it's just as simple as there's no pointers or anything here. It's just a simple POD, plain old data object. You can just push it right on the stack. So here we go. Span. And how do you construct a span? Remember that? Maybe we can go back and look. You always give it a point that starts, a length, and then a vertical or horizontal direction, right? So let's go back to where we were. Here, we're going to go, it's gonna be the, ah, now it's gonna be the start piece. So you can see why I saved, oh, let me bring this whole thing into view here. You can see why I saved the start P, right? That was useful because I, want, I knew I was gonna start the span with it here. So. Uh, we saved it here before we incremented it to the end of the span. Because right now, if I used if I used p down here, it would start it would start the span at the end of the span, and then it would it would it would be wrong. So I want that to be here, and then I want what the length is what. Well, we're counting the length right here. That's what we were doing. We were counting how many boxes we're hopping over, and that's where I said the bug was if it runs around to the other the other line. Um, and then we're going to just basically use the same vert, right? We're, if we're traversing the grid horizontally, the span is gonna be horizontal. If we're traversing the grid vertically, the span will be vertical, right? So that's it. So that's all we have to do. And the last thing we should do is add a little, uh, let's do a little print routine, maybe down here. Let's do next to this print routine. Well, I know inside the grid we can do it. Well, maybe it's, separate. it's still good enough to be separate. Print spans const, and what is that? So this is maybe a final little small challenge for you. What's the code in here? To print the spans. Remember the span already has a an operator that prints for C out. So all you have to do is iterate over them, right? And that's just gonna be span. You can do a reference, const span reference, uh, or you could do just a span s and it would copy it. it it's a, it's okay either way. And then spans, and then what are you gonna do for the S? You're gonna say, well, just print it. Maybe we want like a little bit of formatting so it actually says uh, something like, you know span something like this and then maybe we want this to be indented a little bit just to make it look a little nicer okay so let's go down here to the bottom of the file let's fill the spans and let's print the spans okay let's compile that and see where we are well there we go there's our 14 spans for this puzzle so we're getting closer now 
all we have to do is find out what's in those spans and then call the routine in the library to complete all the words and then write the words in there and then to see which ones we'll finish. So that's the last couple lectures. We're getting close to the end of the entire, uh, uh, you know, basics half, first half of this of this course. And this is this is a key achievement right here to be able to pick up the 14 spans like this and print them out. Seven of them are vertical or, or horizontal rather, and then seven of them are vertical. And you can see they really start, you know, they go three, three, four, seven, four, three, three, and then on the vertical side it's four, 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 three, four, four, four. Um, the topic for the very next module is to take those spans and for each one of those spans, ask the grid to fill in a string to show us what values exist in that span right now. That will really help us take the next step towards asking the library what words will complete each of those spans. So I uh, hope to see you in the next module.